um, ruling in favour of by on board Panola to allow the go ahead um, for the um, interconnecting pipeline through counties Meath and Monaghan to the north, uh, which has been criticised by a number of groups and particularly local TDs, uh, uh, Sinn Féin's Padre Thobin and uh, uh, also by Fianna Fáil, from whom we'll hear Thomas Byrne, the local TD, in a moment. Um, the government chief, Whip Regina Doherty, is also a local TD in Meath East. And she has said, according to the Irish Times this morning, that um, the question of the uh, interconnector and her opposition to it is more important to her than our position around the cabinet table. We rang Regina Doherty this morning. She uh, is not going to talk to us, but she did give us a statement saying that she's bitterly disappointed but not surprised by the decision. Um, And she says, in terms of her position in government, she has what she says is one last chance to work to get the decision overturned and she's going to remain in government to use that chance. Uh, As I said, Fianna Fáil TD, uh, Thomas Byrne, also critical of that decision. and He's on the line now. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. What should happen? This should go underground. Um, uh, this is not a case of not in my backyard, but it's a case of we want this under our backyards. Um, this will not be accepted by the people of Mead. Uh, they're up in arms about it. I was talking to residents in Kilmaine and Mud and in Kilmullen, both ends of the line in my constituency yesterday. This won't be accepted. Uh, there is already a similar underground line happening between Belgium and Germany. Uh, the technology is changing all the time. And not only that, am I saying that, but the on board Pinala's inspector acknowledges that yesterday. And at a number of... Uh, points in the report, and the report is over se- almost 700 pages long, um, he suggested to the board that they would look at the fee- uh, doing studies on, first on the feasibility of integrating uh, the two systems, underground and overground. He would acknowledge there's a difference of opinion as to how the underground is done. He says it's feasible, she, sorry, she says it's feasible, the, inspector, uh, the chief inspector was a lady, and she says as well that the board may wish to consider expert opinion on technology options. Now, Board Panala didn't take up uh, the inspector's advice in relation to this, but in my opinion, uh, the political system needs to do, and Fianna Fáil, uh, since 2013, has been calling for such an independent international commission to come in and look at all of the options and to properly look uh, at the underground option, which don't forget, Carl, for many years Ergut was saying it simply wasn't possible to do, and in the last number of years they have acknowledged that it is feasible to do. So that was in, a major in some areas because of cost, and well, only they, they, in some they, areas. They've said it's feasible, and before that they were si- sim- simply saying it wasn't possible. So we've come a long way, the technology has changed, and there is this, this is, by the way, this is a European project of common interest. So this is going to be tied up in Brexit negotiations as well. It hasn't got through planning uh, in the north yet either. And there is a, already a similar project of common interest between Belgium and Germany, uh, which is going underground in exactly the way that the on board Panala's inspector suggests that board Panala now, would, would, would study, and what, that hasn't been done. What do you make of Air, Air Grid's line that they have made every effort to keep this as much as possible away from pe- people's homes particularly? Well, and well, they've also, as we know, uh, made an offer of um, 30,000 in the case of people who are within 50 metres uh, of this uh, proposed pi- pylon. People, people don't want this and I certainly know people's homes and I'm thinking of our little tiny gale tucked in, in Mead East and Gibson and that, that area is going to be wrecked um, by this proposal and you're talking about the ancient area of Tulsa as well. When you, say, when you say wrecked I mean there, there are pylons all over the country um, that's a, these, a bit these strong. Are, this, 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 no no this, this, this no, by the way, Carl, this isn't just in County Mead or Cavan or Monaghan. All across Europe, across the world, this is the common international experience now, that communities do not want these. We had an underground line built between Batterstown, the same place as this other one is starting, and, and Rush to go across to England. There wasn't a word about it, and there, was, there were great community relations between Ergwood and the community in that area uh, because of that, and there were community uh, work done as a result of it. Not a problem at all, a few roadworks, etc. So this can be done, this can get community acceptance. That's why in Europe they're moving moving towards different systems and we need to get with the programme uh, in this country and that's why we need to take up what the inspector has said in the report and look seriously at these options in terms of an international commission to actually examine this and get this job done because because of the public delays or public objections and delays and mess ups by Airgrid, this project is already 10 years behind schedule. Would you accept, so that's part of the problem here. Would you accept, given as I say there are pylons all over the country, that this could be dealt with in some areas by putting it underground rather than the the obviously more expensive option of running it underground all the way. 
Well, you see, we don't know that it's expensive, uh, more expensive, because at the start, Airgrid was talking figures about 25 times the cost. It, it came down to three times the cost in, in, a, in a report in 2012, and that was in relation to a, an older fashion type of line. So actually, we don't know the cost, and that's why we need to actually find out what the cost would be by doing an independent study. Right. Well, um, well, the well, cost is already massive over the last 10 years by the delay in relation all right. to one, one other obvious question, given the fact that you and Regina Doherty are obviously at one on this, you both oppose it. What advice would you offer her? Well, look, I mean, Cabinet, if you're in Cabinet, you have collective responsibility for the decisions. At a number of points in the inspector's report, it, government policy is quoted as the reason for this particular project. So if you don't accept the collective responsibility uh, of the Cabinet in relation to this, you only have one option. I'm not talking about Regina specifically, but that's standard practice uh, for ministers who find themselves in a disagreement on policy uh, across the world. So what, is, so uh, what are you saying? Because we are talking about Regina Doherty because she is in the Cabinet and she is a Meadies TD. So that's why I'm well, asking the she, question. I, I think Dan, she has collective responsibility for this decision and if she wants to change that, that's a matter for herself. Thomas Byrne, thank you very much for talking to us.